Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, um, hello everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker this afternoon, Jean-Michel Marin. He is professor of applied mathematics at the University of Montpellier in France, head of the Alexander Grothendieck Mont Montpellier Institute. His areas of interest are Bayesian statistics, in particular model choice, approximate Bayesian computation, Monte Carlo method and important sampling schemes, mixture models and population genetics. He has written two books with Christian Robert, Bayesian Core, a practical approach to computational Bayesian statistics, and Bayesian Essentials with R. He has also published over 40 papers in refereed journals and written several book chapters. He's talking today about Bayesian model shows as a classification problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for being here uh, for this uh, last <laughs> talk of the day. Uh, thank you the scientific committee to invite me and to give me the opportunity to present this work and thank you also uh, to Daniel and all the organizing committee to, to set up such a, a nice meeting. So uh, today I will try to convince you that uh, we can uh, rewrite a Bay Bayesian model shows question as a classification task and I will consider two cases. The first one in when the likelihood is tractable, when we are able to calculate the likelihood, I will do some specific things to rewrite this Bayesian model choice as a classification things. And also I will do the same, uh, but with another methodology uh, in case of intractable likelihood. So this is a sort of, um, of rewriting a problem and introducing a new method uh, not only rewriting a problem, but taking uh, a benefit of, of this rewriting things to, to introduce new methodology. Uh, numerous colleagues participate to, to different parts of this work, and, and for, for first, uh, Christian Robert, where we, we work uh, for, for a lot of time uh, on Bayesian model choice, approximate Bayesian computation uh, in, in, in some sense. And, and, and we do a lot uh, with Christian on this work. Also with Pierre Pudlow. Pierre Pudlow is professor at Marseille University. And, and uh, we work on uh, approximate Bayesian computation. And uh, I have also to, to, to acknowledge the work of my population genetics colleague in Montpellier, who are uh, all the time testing our procedure and, and give us a very important feedback, uh, which uh, help us to improve our methodology. So the, my, my um, interdisciplinary activity uh, with the population geneticist has, has a real impact on my research. Uh, so I have to, 
to, to say that. And uh, I also collaborate uh, on this work with Alice Clenen and Louis Renal. Alice is, is a researcher in Montpellier, and Louis uh, used to be a PhD of mine, and, and, and right now he's a postdoc in Harvard. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a, a standard Bayesian model shows question. Uh, we have M parametric uh, model in competition, so you have a likelihood for each model, a prior on the parameter of each model, and we are in a Bayesian setup, so we probabilize also, probabilize also the model space, so you have a prob prior probability in the model space, and uh, your target is the posterior probability in the model space, that is the pro posterior probability of the model index given the data set. So you observe the while, and you would like to uh, have access or to approximate this quantity. And once you have this quantity, you can take the maximum of this posterior probability to choose a model, or average uh, with respect to this weight if you would like to predict a, a quantity. And uh, I perfectly agree with Chris. All models are wrong. But, uh, but some are useful, and, and, and we tr what we try to do I I is to try to find some useful model uh, for a given task. Is it a predictive task or an explicative task? And here, uh, I suppose that this posterior probability is a well-defined object to do this task. I will not discuss the property of this. And uh, I will uh, try to see how we can approximate this quantity, which is called the evidence. So this is a, the key quantity of uh, when you want to calculate the, the, the posterior probability in the model space. This is the evidence, the marginal likelihood. So you integrate the prior with respect, you integrate the likelihood with respect to the prior. And uh, that corresponds to a penalized likelihood. The BIC criterion uh, comes from an asymptotic uh, Laplace approximation of, of this marginal uh, likelihood. Uh, and uh, uh, all the property of the BIC are well known, and, and also there is some, this very nice paper from Dayerton and, and, and Plumer uh, w w w with very nice extension for singular model uh, selection problem. So our target is this marginal likelihood. There is some specific uh, difficulty uh, with the Bayesian model choice paradigm. Uh, first set of difficulties, some prior difficulty. Uh, when typically you have no prior information, it's difficult to choose the prior distribution for, on the parameter of each model in a compatible way. I will not discuss this point uh, today, but uh, I have to mention that. Choosing the prior, uh, you have a price to pay. Uh, you have this very nice uh, quantity to select the model. You have this automatic penalization when you integrate with respect to the prior, but the price to pay is to select this prior in a compatible and in a clever way. Uh, also, uh, if you do not have any prior information, it's not, uh, you cannot directly use uh, some sort of M prior proper distribution because if you do that, uh, the posterior probability uh, are, uh, depend on an unknown uh, constant here, so it's, it's another difficulty. And, and also, it's not really easy to define the prior uh, in the model space. Uh, I don't address this crucial question in this talk, but I, I would like to, 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 to recall that uh, the price to pay is to define this, this prior distribution. And you have also some specific computational difficulty. And uh, the first one, uh, the, first, uh, the one I will address today is how to approximate the evidence, that is the integrate uh, likelihood here. And also, but this is not specific to Bayesian uh, paradigm, when the number of models in consideration is huge, uh, you have to find a clever way uh, to explore the model space. And uh, for this talk, I will uh, consider that we have a limited number of models and uh, not address the transdimensional uh, sampling uh, like uh, transdimensional MCMC, reversible jump algorithm, to, to uh, explore the model space. So, you have a, a moderate number of model, and for each model, we will try to approximate the marginal likelihood. So we concentrate on this question here, and uh, we consider two cases. The case is where the likelihood is tractable, and the case where this is not the case. And the, the goal of this talk is uh, to show that in each case, this problem can be rewritten 
uh, are, are the uh, classification problem and that we have some very good associated uh, method uh, uh, can be effective here uh, with respect to this prorating of, of the problem. Uh, for the track table likelihood, I, we will introduce and use uh, what is called uh, noisy constructive estimation, but noisy constructive estimation for the specific uh, part of the model, which is the normalizing constant, the noisy constructive estimation has been introduced to estimate the parameter of a model when the likelihood is intractable with respect to the normalizing constant of the likelihood is not available, but here I will uh, use this type of strategy to estimate the normalizing constant of my model, my model uh, and of my procedural distribution here. And uh, in intractable likelihood, I will uh, uh, use some approximate Bayesian computation uh, strategy to uh, uh, approximate the model posterior probability and to select, uh, to select the model. So first, uh, in, in, in few few minutes, uh, the standard uh, method to approximate uh, the integrated likelihood. The integrated likelihood is it's an expectation with respect to the prior distribution. So you can use a uh, sample from the prior and replace this uh, expectation with the empirical average of the likelihood which theta simulated from the prior, an ID sample from the prior. Uh, as you can understand, when the prior is far from the posterior, there is a very high variance of this, and the variance does not exist uh, when the dimension is quite large. So uh, this method is not uh, uh, very uh, used. Uh, another strategy, standard strategy, is to use important sampling. So look, uh, I have a proposal distribution G, and here I uh, change of measure, I multiply by G and divide by G, according that this uh, is respect here, and I change of measure with respect to the integral here, so I have an, here I have an expectation with respect to the prior, and now I have an expectation with respect to this proposal distribution, and I have got this uh, ratio, which is called the important weight here, and now I can simulate uh, an ID sample from G and taking the empirical average of the likelihood multiplied by this ratio, which is the important weight. So I introduce uh, a level of freedom in, in the problem, and uh, uh, we work a lot with Christian to try to design uh, some uh, iterative algorithm to select automatically a good important distribution. We start with some population Monte Carlo algorithm to do that. But uh, unfortunately, uh, one main thing that G, G must have fatter tails than this product, than, than the posterior, typically. Instead of that, uh, this quantity explored and the variances of this is almost infinite here. Uh, the, the construction of G is very problem specific. And, and what we, we, we have as difficulty is that you have a curse of dimensionality. It's uh, uh, not so difficult to show that the variances of the importance weight increase uh, in, an, in, in an exponential uh, terms uh, in terms of the dimension, increase exponentially in terms of the dimension. So, uh, and, and to fight against this, it's extremely difficult. Uh, and so uh, this method is, is very difficult to use when the dimension is quite large here. Uh, in this paper of Newton and, Frat uh, and Raftery, who, who Chris talked talk a lot uh, about this morning with this very uh, clever method, which is called the weighted likelihood bootstrap, there is not only the weighted likelihood bootstrap uh, thing, there is also this identity here, look, uh, you take now an expectation with respect to the posterior distribution. So here is the posterior distribution. If you take the expectation of this, if this is a density here, and with, with respect to this constraint here, you take the expectation, so this simplify with this, the integral of this density is equal to one, and this expectation is then equal to one, one over the evidence, and then you can approximate the evidence by taking this harmonic mean estimator. So you take the reverse of the estimator of this expectation here. 
and, and you get the harmonic mean estimator uh, here. Uh, and uh, approximate the evidence using posterior sample is, is a form of, of a grail, uh, because what we would like to have, and we would like to have uh, the evidence when you have been able to sample from the posterior distribution to get automatically the evidence, and this is a way to do that. Uh, unfortunately, so first, contrary to important sampling, this density must have later tail than the posterior here. And uh, the first proposal of Newton and Raftery was to use a prior for this density, and unfortunately, uh, the, the, this choice will result in an infinite variances for the corresponding estimator. And uh, there is some correction to, 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 the, to that problem and to choose in a clever way this function here but with very high variances, but there is these two uh, very interesting proposals, and the last one from pa Pedro, uh, and, and uh, a way to correct, in some sense, the harmonic mean estimator, but unfortunately, once again, there is some curse of dimensionality associated to this proposal. When the dimension uh, of the parameter space increase, uh, this proposal uh, uh, is not uh, very easy to tune. You have to, to, to tune uh, some parameter here. Okay, another uh, solution and well-known solution is, is a cheap solution. So look, you have for sure this equality here. Uh, just say that the posterior is the likelihood multiplied by the prior divided by the evidence here. And so, so for any value of theta, if you are able to approximate the posterior distribution here, you can approximate then the evidence here. And uh, some people use this, and, and to approximate the posterior distribution, people use some sort of Gaussian mixture or non-parametric approximation based on a preliminary MCMC sample, on preliminary MCMC sample, this. But once again, uh, you have the problem to approximate a density, and in large dimension, it's a sort of a nightmare. So once again, curse of dimensionality associated to this proposal. Uh, when you have a latent variable model, uh, and if you are able to calculate this exactly, that is the posture of theta given while in the latent variable. Uh, for some latent variable model, you have access to this quantity uh, here in, in a closed form. Uh, that is the case, for instance, for mixture model. For mixture model, you have access to the posture given the observed and the mixture locations here. Uh, and then you can take a benefit of the latent variable simulated by an MCMC sampler to approximate the density in a raw brachialization way here. So this is quite efficient. And here, uh, you do uh, just a raw brachialization. So uh, compared to this, it's, it's more, more efficient for sure than to approximate the whole density with uh, the, the problem of uh, of the curse of dimensionality. But once again, uh, when the dimension of the latent variable is large, you have high variances to this and some sort of curse of dimensionality. So uh, there is a lot of alternative. Uh, one of very interesting alternative is the Anelid important sampling of Neil. Uh, this is a way to iteratively construct a good important sampling distribution, but once again, when the dimension is quite large, it's very difficult to tune here. We have the, bri the bridge sampling technique. The bridge sampling technique is able to approximate the ratio of integrated likelihood. The ratio of two integrated likelihood is a base factor. And to approximate the base factor, you can use uh, this strategy. There is a very nice uh, error package which is called bri bridge sampling, uh, uh, but uh, works mostly for embedded model, and, and when the model are not embedded, it's quite difficult to use uh, this bridge sampling strategy. Uh, the marginal can be viewed also as a subproduct of some sequential, Mon of the sequential Monte Carlo sampler of Del Moral, uh, Duce and Jazra, uh, a very uh, important and nice paper. There is also some, uh, some other uh, identity, um, different from the SHIB one uh, and the savage, uh, the decay savage ratio is a form of identity to use to come back and, uh, and use it to approximate the evidence, but uh, once again, uh, not so easy. 
Okay, so now uh, I will show you that we can have another completely uh, different view. And uh, I will try to reduce uh, this integral problem to the estimation of one parameter. Okay, so uh, how to do that? Uh, the idea is to reduce this estimation problem to a classification problem. And uh, this is not the first time these things are, are done. Uh, we have uh, the logistic regression is used already in, by ASTI and, and co-authors in 2003 for density estimation. For the heat intensity estimation, you have also this paper. We use logistic regression. And there is also uh, the noisy constructive estimation by Gutmann and Ivarinen, uh, which is specially designed to estimate the, uh, the parameter of uh, a model when the likelihood is intractable, intractable with respect to its normal is constant, not, not, not because of, uh, of latent variable. And uh, typically, we will use this type of strategy, but to estimate the normalizing constant of the model and not to estimate the parameter of an unnormalized, uh, of an intractable. So uh, how, how to do? So suppose you have a, a sample from the posterior distribution. So I need a sample from the posterior, OK? Then you create a sample from the prior. And you concatenate in a vector these two samples, and you create a vector z, z here, which is equal to 1. And the zi is equal to 1 if the simulation in this vector come from the posterior and is equal to 0 if the simulation come from the prior. OK, so you have artificially created a classification problem with a sample of theta coming from the posterior and uh, another n sample of theta coming from the prior. OK, so the distribution of theta given z equal to 1 is the posterior, and the distribution of theta given z equal to 0 is the prior. OK? Right now, what you can do is to calculate the log of odd ratio based on this model you just introduced here, calculate explicitly the log of odd ratio. And what you see that this is the ratio of this. This is the posterior here. Divide by the ratio of this, which is a sorry, which, which is a prior, and, and you have here the, the, the normalizing on, on these two posterior density who cancel, so you directly have this here, and this, what you get, you get this. You get that the log odds ratio is a constant plus the log of the likelihood, okay? And this constant is minus the log of the evidence. This is not a model, you, you, this is a, this will look like a logistic regression, where the covariance is the log of the likelihood and the parameter associated to this covariance is equal to 1, and where the intercept of the logistic regression uh, is to be estimated and is e equal to minus log of the evidence. Okay? So right now, if you are able to estimate based, based on these two samples you create, a sample from the posterior and a sample from the prior, to estimate this constant here, this value of C, you can estimate the evidence. So you replace totally the calculation of the integral, so this, integra uh, this integral calculation problem, by the estimation of the intercept of a logistic regression model here. But this is a logistic regression you get. You construct the model like this. This is not a choice to have uh, design a logistic regression, okay? Here. So say this value of C can be estimated using our two simulated data set and the maximum likelihood estimator. And you have to take the arg max in C of this quantity here. This is uh, almost not difficult to find the value of C. You well know the property of this function, so you can estimate C. And uh, then, uh, once you have estimated the value of C, you can uh, have an estimation of the evidence. So we replace this integral calculation by the estimation of the intercept of a logistic regression model. Here. 
uh, what can happen uh, if the prior is far uh, from the posterior, the classification task is very easy. So uh, the likelihood that correspond to the logistic regression model is uh, very flat, okay? And uh, with respect to the value of C, so you have a very high variances in the estimation of C for this flat likelihood, okay? So once again, if the posterior and the prior are too far, then you have a too easy classification problem, a too flat likelihood, and uh, a, a big variances in the estimation of C. So we will do what we are doing in important sampling, is to introduce a proposal distribution instead of using the prior versus the posterior in the classification task, you use the prior versus a proposal, and this proposal can be constructed uh, with respect to another uh, posterior sample you have, okay? Uh, here. So look, you have a simulation from the posterior, you have a simulation from this instrumental distribution uh, G, and this instrumental distribution has to be choose as close as possible as the posterior, such that the classification tax, task is not, uh, not too easy, su such that the likelihood is quite concentrated for the value of C, the likelihood with respect to the logistic regression model here. So we do exactly the same as before. Uh, the distribution of theta given z equal to one is a posterior. The distribution of theta given z equal to zero is this uh, instrumental distribution G. And if you calculate the log odds ratio, you get this, and you get the same type of thing as before. Uh, if you replace here G by the prior, the prior, uh, there is a, a cancellation here, and you recover exactly the same element. And so you have this log of ratio, which is a linear combination of this constant C plus the log of the likelihood multiplied by the prior divided by the instrumental distribution. And once again, you can estimate uh, the value of C using our two simulated data sets and their maximum likelihood estimator. And, and, uh, and I will now show you some, uh, some example on how, how it works. Let's first start uh, with a toy example. So, ultra toy. <laughs> you have a Gaussian uh, model with a non variances and non mean. You take a, a standard normal for the, for the value of a non value of theta as prior distribution. In such a case, the posterior and the Evidence are explicit. The posterior is this Gaussian, with y divided by two and one over two for the for the variances, and the evidence is exactly equal to this. So look, if I show you uh, an R code for the logistic regression approximation, here you get I, I get a value of y which is quite in the tail of the corresponding model, so it's not so the prior is quite far. Uh, here from the posterior for this value of y, which is equal to five here, okay? So you have explicit value for the target, the target, the, the, our target, this is all, this value here, exactly, so this, the, the, there is a missing log here. Eh? This is a log of, of this quantity eh? here. And what, what you get here, what I do, I simulate from the prior, a sample, I simulate from the posterior sample. Here, I create, uh, I, I concatenate these two vector. I create the simulation uh, allocation, one when this is a posterior and zero when this is a prior. I create the covariate uh, x, and then I use the GLM uh, function to estimate the intercept of this logistic regression model and setting that uh, putting the, the command of set here just to say that you don't have to estimate the parameter associated to this covariate x because uh, remember this parameter is exactly equal, sorry, is exactly equal to one. And then uh, we use here the GLM function but uh, we can directly uh, optimize 
and, and fi find a zero of, you can calculate explicitly the derivative of this, and so you can maximize, not explicitly, but find the zero of the first derivative, not using the GLM function. It's just to show you uh, 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 the link between uh, uh, this strategy and the, the logistic regression. And then you get an approximation. The model coefficient is an approximation of the log of, of this quantity, uh, the log of the evidence here. So look. Uh, if you take, this is a target here, so you have, uh, consider 100 replicates, we have 10,000 simulation for the standard Monte Carlo strategy here. We have 10,000 simulation for the logistic with the prior, and here are the results you get here. So you use the prior in the two cases, and as you can see, the distribution here of the corresponding estimator for this 100 replicate is more concentrated for this logistic regression things with respect to this Monte Carlo uh, uh, corresponding thing. Okay, right now we can do the same, but using an instrumental a proposal distribution. Look, first you simulate a first sample from the posterior, then you can calculate the sample empirical mean so this is an approximation of the posterior expectation. You have an approximation of the posterior standard deviation. And you can use now this approximation to create a sample from the instrumental distribution G, which is a normal with mean M and uh, standard deviation SD. And so you simulate a posterior. You have simulated from this instrumental distribution uh, this sample. And you do exactly the same. And you get an approximation from, from the intercept. So you can compare this approximation here by the corresponding important sampling estimator using the same proposal uh, here. And uh, this is almost the same range of variability, but in, in, in few minutes we will show an uh, example uh, when we increase the dimension and, and, and clearly difference between important sampling and this strategy here. <coughs> okay. So uh, let's look at a more challenging example. Uh, we have this Poisson uh, regression model. So you have while given alpha, beta, n, and x, which is a Poisson distribution, uh, and with parameter n multiplied by the exponential of alpha, which is an intercept of the Poisson regression with link uh, exponential function. And here, this combination, linear combination between the parameter beta and some covariate x here. So n and x are supposed to be known, and the vector uh, theta, alpha, beta of dimension t plus 1 is unknown. And you, you take a, a Gaussian, uh, I don't discuss about prior today, so we, we take a, a Gaussian prior with variance is equal to 10 here. <coughs> For the, a, a, and all these random variable here uh, associated to the parameter are supposed to be independent. And we apply to this to a real data set. So uh, the data set is for the 50 US states. We observed the number of firearm related deaths in 2010, the state population, and some covariates here associated to the model. So you try to explain this number of firearm related deaths uh, with these covariates here. And uh, this is a, a, a study which has been published in the Lancet in, in, in this paper for, for Kalasan here. And, and so what we do is to try to test our strategy to, and to approximate the evidence. So here you are in dimension seven. You have six, six covariate plus the intercept. So you have a vector of dimension seven to integrate here. And what we try, we do exactly the same as before, but it's almost impossible to sample explicitly from the posterior, so you use an MCMC sampler. MCMC sampler, we take 10,000 MCMC sampler after burning and the thinning, uh, we take uh, each five uh, simulation here, so a thinning parameter which is equal to five, and so you end up with 2,000 mm, uh, a simulation from the posterior, 2,000 simulation right now from a proposal, and a proposal which is based 
from another MCMC chain, and with this other MCMC chain, also of 10,000 elements, you, we approximate the posterior covariance and the posterior expectation, and you use a proposal, which is a Gaussian centered at the posterior variances, and the posterior, uh, central as the posterior expectations, approximated, sorry, and with posterior variances multiply by a factor of two. And we see how the estimator uh, behave with respect to this value of two. So when two is equal to one, we take uh, as, uh, for the proposal, the same covariances as your estimate of the posterior uh, variances here, or here you multiply by two, by five, by 10, and here you divide by two, by five, and, and by 10, just to see the impact of modifying these variances. So the best uh, choice is to choose the val value of two, which is equal to one here, and uh, you uh, decrease the uh, quality of the approximation when you increase the factor uh, which is multiplied to the covariances or, or, or when you decrease uh, this value of the factor. So if you do the same, but with the important sampling estimator uh, as expected when uh, the tail of the proposal are, are lighter than the tail of the posterior, which is a case when you divide the covariances uh, by 10, by, two, by 5, or by 2, the approximation of the evidence using important sampling is very bad, and there's this is something uh, almost with no variances here, around there, so there is a, a very, very, very huge variances, and, and things becomes better when you multiply by this factor, but compared to, the, to, to this case here, uh, the best parameter to choose is two is equal to one, so you have nothing to tune. You have your best approximation to the posterior, and you use this best approximation to your posterior as instrumental distribution to create this classification task. Compare uh, to uh, the important sampling where you have to tune, so why 10 and what not 20, so I can continue. Uh, here, and uh, here I have 10,000 uh, simulation, and here, uh, due to uh, uh, the MCMC uh, sample, and, uh, I have only uh, 200,000 uh, uh, um, 2000 simulation, sorry. Okay, so if I compare right now our strategy with the important sampling one with two is equal to 10, remember it's not the same sample size here, here you have 10,000, here you have 2,000, uh, here. So uh, here, uh, as you can see, the, the, um, the scale is very... Okay, so there is, there is a... Uh, the best choice is this important sampling estimator in this case, but uh, we have to, to tune. In fact, the value of 10 is better than the value of 20, so there is some tuning and, 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 and also more simulation. Okay, so what we are doing right now is to uh, include, uh, so we test several examples, and for this example, we have introduced a latent variable, which is a random effect. So we introduce a random effect in this model, and uh, as we have 50 observations, so we have 57 parameters to integrate, and, and uh, is still work, and, and look, uh, with respect to our uh, parading, you can introduce in theta the latent variable, okay? So I present this method as a method for tractable likelihood, okay, but if you have intractability uh, due to a presence of a latent variable, you can include this latent in the theta. The theta can be parameter, the latent, and you do the same. So. Uh, exactly the same thing uh, uh, like here. The same for important sampling, but you, 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 have, you have two samples. So that, that, that's what we are doing right now. And uh, so we are testing with question this, this strategy. Uh, and uh, we also work on promising extension. So uh, uh, as I say, I take a thinning parameter to uh, 
ensure more independence between my MCMC sample, but uh, what we are trying to do is to take into account that uh, uh, the sample from the Porsche come from an MCMC uh, sample. Uh, you can write the distribution of the MCMC chain once you get uh, uh, the stationary distribution, the stationary distribution of the MCMC algorithm is the posterior, and once you are in the posterior, you stay in the posterior, but you have all the transition, and if this, if this is a Gibbs, you can calculate, uh, uh, in some sense, all, all things, and, and not have a thinning and consider independence between uh, parameter value. And, and also, uh, as I say, we, we adapt uh, uh, to latent variable. Okay, uh, right now, uh, let me start with the second part of my talk. Uh, the second part is to consider intractable likelihood. There is two types of intractability, uh, typically. The first one is uh, you are not able to calculate the likelihood because you are not able to integrate some latent variable here, and you are, so you do, don't have access to this. There is a lot of algorithm uh, designed to solve this problem, the EM algorithm, the Gibbs sampling, the pseudo-marginal, MCMC method, variational approximation also are designed to do this. Uh, and there is an all, another type of intractability, and this other type is uh, coming from the fact that the normalizing constant of the likelihood is intractable, two here. And uh, okay, so in these two cases, it will be a challenge to calculate the evidence. The evidence is the integral of the likelihood with respect to the prior. And what I say is that you do not have access to the likelihood. So uh, calculate the evidence is, is, is a big problem. And uh, what we have proposed a set of method uh, based on approximate computation, uh, approximate based on computation strategy. And, and this strategy consists of simulating a pseudo data set using the Bayesian generative model and compare the pseudo data set to the observed and then deduce uh, some uh, interesting uh, parameter value when the simulated Fredo data set is close enough to the observed, you say that the parameter value used to simulate this pseudo data set come from um, approximately from the posterior and things like that. Okay, so this is what is called the rejection sampler for parameter inference. And there is some numerous development of this strategy, some regression adjustment, more efficient algorithm, uh, selection of summary statistics. There is also some model choice development, and I will uh, speak about that right now. And, and also, there is a lot of uh, theoretical results uh, right now also uh, on, on, on this type of approximation. So a most popular and efficient strategy is to use the machine learning tools on the training set produced uh, by the Bayesian generative model. So we have a Bayesian generative model, so we are able to construct what we call a reference table, a table which contain a model index, the parameter associated, and a pseudo data set. And so you produce the table where you will learning on. Okay, and then what we would like to do, once you get this table, we would like to approximate the posterior probability uh, in the model space, which is what? Which is, in some sense, a classification problem. You have the observed. You have this table containing the model index and some summary statistics. And you want to affect the, the observed to a model. So you learn the relationship between the summary statistics and the model index on the table you simulate using the, gen the Bayesian generative model. And then you apply your uh, uh, learning strategy or machine learning algorithm to the observe and you get a model index, you can get a posterior probability and you can also do that to approximate the posterior density. There is some machine learning strategy uh, based notably on mixture of density network of Bishop to approximate the conditional posterior using a neural net to approximate the conditional density and, and calibrating the neural net based on this simulated table from the Bayesian generative model. So you see, uh, I have an inferential problem. I generate a data set using 
my Bayesian generative model, and then I learn on, the, on this data set. And what we do is to use a, a random forest. Uh, right now, there is some people who use some sort of deep learning, deep learning using first autoencoder strategy to learn also uh, the interesting set of summary statistics. There is some, some different type of strategy. Uh, but the one we propose, either for, for, for parameter uh, inference, nor for, for, for model choice, is to use random forest, uh, because there is almost no tuning parameter, and quite good property for, for, for sparse problem and heterogeneous predictor. And uh, our feedback with, with our population geneticist colleague, we use a lot this type of strategy to do uh, some inference on, on the, the, quali the Kingman coalescent process to select a model or to estimate the parameter of the Kingman coalescent. And uh, you have an intractability with the Kingman coalescent due to the presence of uh, a, a latent variable in a very uh, huge space, which is the general the genealogical tree between the individual. So you sample DNA at the present time and you try to recover the the, the, the history of the, of the population, that, that's the point. So you have a big model, uh, you have a big latent space, and then they simulate genetic data set, have a way to compare in a good way this simulation to the observed, so to create some summary statistics and to learn on, on, on this table. And, and uh, as a machine learning uh, tools to learn, there is a lot of possibility, but uh, they need something with uh, not a lot of tuning parameters. They, 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 are, they are not experts and they don't have the time to uh, turn the button for, for months. Uh, and what, what we observe with them is that this choice of, of random forest is, is quite good, uh, a good compromise between uh, the time you spend for tuning and, and, and accuracy. And also you have some theoretical guarantee and why I say sparse problem? Uh, because typically, we, you have a lot of, of summary statistics based on your pseudo and your observed. And, and for, 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 for specific problem, only few of these summary have to be taken into account. So this is a, there is some, some sparsity uh, for, for, the, for the, this, this question of not, notably in population genetics. So once again, eh, we consider M statistical model in competition. We have a prior on the model space and a prior for the parameter of each model. And you target the posterior. We would like to select a model. And uh, the strategy is very uh, easy to understand. So uh, using the Bayesian model, you simulate uh, this reference table. So you simulate a model index from the prior. You simulate a parameter from the prior in, in the parameter space here. Then you generate a pseudo data set and you summarize this, this, this pseudo data set. And uh, this is the input of our uh, algorithm, ABC random forest. And then the output is a random forest classifier to infer the model index. So you learn the, the, the model index using this summary statistics. And, and what we use as summary statistics is is a, is a collection from, from scientific uh, theory input to, to some other machine learning alternative. We put some uh, linear disc discriminant axis, we put some SVM classifier, we, we put a lot of, of things in the box, and then uh, the random forest play also, in some sense, a role of to, to aggregate all this information, and, and then, and then to, to select a model. Uh, random forest is, is good to, to predict here uh, <clears throat> the map, so to select a model, but uh, the frequency of tree associated with the majority model is not a proper sub substitute to, to the true posterior probability. Uh, it's a well-known question in machine learning. Uh, classification is, is an easy problem than regression. If you would like to classify, uh, and here the forest is construct e e with a, a, a classification uh, goal, uh, and, and so the criteria used in the forest is uh, the, the entropy of the Gini index, which is for classification. So, so the, our goal is classification. So you cannot use a subproduct of this classification task, uh, 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 and to have a good estimation of your posterior probability. So, so we do another thing. We have this 
uh, equality or here we are, remember we are, we are Bayesian here, so uh, the, the random come from the model here, M, uh, all in, in condition on this, and, and, and we, we consider that this choice is fixed to this first, uh, this first forest here, sorry, is fixed. And then uh, uh, what we have, we have that the posterior probability of the model you have chosen using the first random forest is equal to one minus this expectation, okay? This expectation to that the true model is not equal to the one you choose. And so if you would like to as approximate this probability, you can approximate this expectation. And how to do that is to use a second random forest to approximate uh, this expectation and with the, the sort of out of bag magic trick, you can avoid overfitting and using the same reference table. I don't have time or I don't really want to enter in the detail here. Uh, something, uh, unfortunately, we find promising and, and the PhD of Louis Renal was focused on, on, on something specific to say, okay, we construct a forest which is able to uh, estimate everywhere in the space, but I am only interested in one point, my observed. So can we localize this random forest algorithm in order to take into account that I would like to predict only for Y, okay? And not everywhere in the space. Uh, so we, are, we have tried to construct a local approach uh, for this forest. Uh, and I remember <laughs> Judith and Chris invite me in, in Oxford to discuss about, uh, it was uh, one, one year ago, or more than one year ago, one year and a an half ago. Uh, and I say, okay, we try this local approach and it, it's quite difficult. Uh, and EYT wa, wa, was there, he said to me, uh, it will be hard to localize this forest. The, the tree in the forest are already very local. Uh, so it's, it's something strange you try to do. And, and in fact, uh, one year and a an half after, I have to confess that uh, Hawaii uh, <laughs> says the truth. So, okay, I will explain why uh, and what's happened. But look, wh what we say, uh, you have this, you have two models, okay? The green uh, and the red. You have, uh, the density of point is very huge here and, and, and low here. And we would like to predict this guy. There is a star here, okay? There is a, the point is here. If you do that, the first split, because of the density of point is greater in this region compared to this one, the first split will occur here, okay? To separate, well, these two parts. And this split is, is not good to predict the point here, okay? So what we would like to do, we, we, we would prefer to have a first split here rather than a split here. So how to proceed and to try to design procedure to enforce the split to not be this one, but the split, we take into account that we would like to predict this point. And we try that for three years. Eh? Uh, first, we try to change uh, the information gain. The information gain is a criteria uh, of split, which in the in, in the forest, which is the Gini index of the entropy, and wh what we do is, is to try, we introduce some kernel approach. We try several kernel and bandwidths, which associate it with to the entropy. So this is kernelized entropy, uh, 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 and this is related to this lazy decision tree works of of Friedman. So we try this. What's happened? Uh, when you introduce this kernel. Uh, the, the cut is very close to the observed, so the effect of the kernel uh, uh, is to put the cut close to the observed and to have the cut more close to the observed is quite, is quite suboptimal too. Uh, so the problem, we try to uh, weight locally the individuals using a first forest, so some people already do that, it is called the case-specific random forest. So you use the first forest and in the bootstrap part of the second forest, you use a weight 
uh, which distance each point uh, to your observe as a bootstrap, as a weighted bootstrap at the second part here. Uh, another, we try to weight the predictor variable. Once again, we use a first forest, then you did use from this first forest some weight in the space of predictor variable. And when you select uh, the variable uh, in the second forest, you can select the variable according to this weight. So weight the individual, weight the variable, change the criteria within the forest. And uh, unfortunately, we try several examples, for, for instance, this one. And we already uh, obtained the same type of result. Uh, we got an error rate for the standard random forest, and, and, and after a lot of tuning, all these strategy do almost the same and, and, and not better. And, and after three years, we, in fact, we understand what happened. Uh, there is something very interesting in the random forest, and I will conclude with that point, uh, is that um, at, a, at a node, we select a subsample of predictor variable, and if in this subsample of predictor variable, all are noise variable, you will cut according to a noise variable. Uh, a property uh, when there is no local consideration is that you cut at the boundary of the space. It, it, it's a typical. So it's not a problem if in your bag you have uh, uh, all noise variable because you will cut at the boundary. If you introduce a local things, and if in your bag all are noise variable, you are in a, part, in a sparse problem, you will not cut at the, at, the, at the boundary of the space. You will cut close to uh, the, the value of, of why you would like to predict. And this is typically the problem and the reason why it's extremely complicated to localize this forest. So we fell. Uh, so I think this is the end of the story with this ABC random forest. Right now there is a proposal the proposal using simulation from the prior and, and the forest in the, in, in the big space, and then almost impossible to localize. So I hope I convince you that it's possible to rewrite the Bayesian model choice question as a classification task, uh, either in the tractable likelihood now in the, in the intractable likelihood case, uh, and to use appropriate strategy associated to this return of, of things. Uh, the logistic regression need to be evaluated more carefully. So uh, we have done a, quite a lot of examples with questions, but we continue of work hard uh, on this subject. And, and uh, I have to confess that uh, the ABC random forest approach requires quite a lot of computational power. Uh, ABC, you cannot use ABC on a, on a standard computer. You, are, you, you need a lot of simulation. You need, you need a lot of computational power. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions, comments. So in the first part of the talk, um, estimating C appears to uh, work better if you have a good instrumental uh, no? Now, uh, does it, but still it depends to finding a good instrumental. Indeed, if you, it, it would do better than the other, apparently, it would do better than the other. But still, first, uh, I just, uh, it, it, you still need to, to f find a good uh, instrumental, no? Uh, just to confirm that. And uh, the second one is, do you have theoretical results or any idea of a, that it indeed would have lower variance than, than the other estimator? Not, not now, but we are working on that. We, we typically take some, uh, not, not, not super toy, but some quite challenging example to compare uh, the variances of the important sampling strategy com compared to the variances of the associated strategy of this logistic regression things. And what we have to do also is to play with the sample size. Here, uh, I say nothing about why I take the same value 
uh, the same number of simulation from the posterior and from the instrumental, but you can play also with that. And, and to get some theoretical result, uh, in fact, uh, and, and some asymptotic result, what looks, sorry, here. Okay, we have to modify this value or to take n goes to infinity here yeah, for the for the posterior sample here, and then you take uh, a ratio uh, a, a percent of, of 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 this simulation which is not exactly equal to the same uh, things. You have less simulation from this instrumental compared to the simulation from the prior, but this value tends also to infinity because n. It's a proportion of, of, of n. You see, so, so you are we, we are studying this type of theoretical results uh, uh, in order to compare uh, the accuracy of C, uh, the estimation of C compared to the accuracy of, uh, of important sampling or, or, or Monte, let's say, Monte Carlo uh, integral. We were very uh, exciting first because we say, OK, we have an integral problem. And right now, we have only one parameter to estimate. We are able to estimate one parameter. Uh, the story is more complex uh, than uh, that, unfortunately. But we have only one parameter. A and what we seeing is that uh, the curse of dimensionality uh, has disappeared a bit, but it come back. I, I don't know exactly where we end up with this, but I am quite optimistic. So in the model that you are considering, you have a log concave likelihood. So it is likely that the uh, Laplace approximation will also work relatively well there. Have you compared the accuracy of this approximation with the Laplace approximation? No. Okay. No, but we, we, we try, uh, we, we try uh, to avoid the asymptotic things we have in the, in the Laplace approximation uh, and associated to an ID sample with respect to the observed. Yeah, so, but in so this case, it's look complex. We have an idea so. to have more complex dependent structure and when the Laplace ap approximation is not easy to apply. Uh, and, and our goal I is to include this latent variable. Our, go our goal is to be able to do, to do the same thing for a big hierarchical model. Uh, there is also a, a conditional version of this, uh, where we use a, we start from the from, from the prior, and we start from from this posterior, and we we include a, tr a transition uh, here, and, and what we do we do the same, uh, this posterior with the transition and, and a conditional in the reverse sense. It, 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 so it, it, it's another. Uh, but no, no, we, we, we do not compare. But I, I agree with, with your point. Thank you. But, but log concave, he, he, we can also use as instrumental distribution a mixture, uh, a more multimodal, but we, we, we don't try. Good. I think we are out of time. So uh, please join me in thanking the speaker once again.